Son of a scrub sucker. Ow! God damn it! Faulty nimwat converter. Circuit! Where's that new data pad? Get out of there, you rock crack. Okay, let's see what we got. Hey guys. Incoming worm dispatch. Inferno here with a first look at Lithobreak. Uh, this is a game that's uh, in development at the moment, and you can request ac early access via their Steam page. So if you look up Lithobreak, one word, on Steam, it's by Tau City Labs, and early access release date is set for 23rd of Feb 2021. So a limited number of testers can uh, try and request access and be granted by the devs. And if you want to support the developers and support me a little as well, there's a link below the, in the description, video description, that says buy Lithobreak. And you can pre-order the game. There's two versions on their website. And if you use the code INFERNO, I-N-F-E-R-N-O, you will get 10% discount. And also gives a little bit back to me as well. Uh, so Lithobreak... You play as Eli, which is voiced by Sam McMurray, an entrepreneur that made a fortune developing moon mining technologies only to have your reputation recently tarnished. Aided by the best engineering minds in the verse, you are focused on developing a technological beacon of hope and restoring your legacy. So it's uh, episodic. Uh, we expect to start releasing season one beta episodes in late 2020, with new episodes being released in the following months. The full version of the game will include a free play mode with a more open-ended mining and development experience. This full version will also include all the Season 1 episodes. So I've played a little bit just to understand the game. It, it did take me a little while to understand some of the mechanics, but I'll play these messages and I'll explain as we go. So we've got to play a message from Serena. So you've got uh Eli and he is it his nephew anyway listen to this message Todd my favorite no good only nephew time to get out of the basement and think about your future kid remember the mecha battlefields game you said that Cetus Tech programming could be integrated into litho break here at 61 Signi station well you were right you little circling been integrating Cetus Tech for years now, and I want you to come make upgrades. Be just like building those mechas, but in real life. Got plenty of coffee and a view of the moon you have to see to believe. Send me a yes, and I'll book transport immediately. The verse awaits, kid. Uncle Eli. So the reason he's said that is there's this little, on the Mars station, there's this little voice message. This is what you do with your time? <laughs> Just because you don't play Mecha Battle doesn't mean it doesn't exist, Uncle Eli. I make some of the most popular battle designs in the verse, Ra. Hmm. Even if my team gets them destroyed. So you what? You d design the battles, the field? That what? Mechas, Ra. I design the Mecha. Oh. Each one has parts made of different materials. Better the materials, stronger the Mecha. Better the design, better the performance. But designing good parts with the built-in CAD tool takes time. And credits, Raw, lots of credits. Hmm. Well, that almost sounds like engineering. You're a surprising little feeling, aren't you? You know, most players don't design, but I like it. Hmm. You should use Mecha to help out Lithobreak. They're more of a software company than game developer, if you find the right programmers. Well, I'm not sure our simple moon mining tech is compatible with a video game or even of interest to them. Give them a chance, Ra. It's called Cetus Tech. Check them out. I'd rather give you a chance. Get your engineering degree and I'll find you a job. Sure, Ra. Whatever. 
So that's a little background into the into where we are now. So now we've got this email uh, from Kiva Byford, who's the lead engineer. Dear ELA, I hope this finds you well. We have completed phase two development of the mining equipment project. This includes preliminary designs of the ore extraction rover, multi-purpose transport rover, service and fabrication rover, density sifting or centrifuge, and the tiered storage structure. As per the agreement, the development will proceed to the next phase. Please let us know of any issues that arise with the prototype equipment and we will address it as expediently as possible. And then we have uh, Serena, who's replying, looks like, um, replying to his email with Todd. Eli, it's been a long time, years actually. Did you even realize that when you wrote with a job offer for Todd? Not even a short note or hello for your only sister? Par for the course. Us fearlings don't interest you much anymore, even when we are family. I am glad to see your name has been cleared. That said, your nephew must decline your research and development offer. I think it's best we maintain our distance, don't you? Please eat something nutritious once in a while. You can't live on coffee. Serena. Okay. So Serena wants Todd to work, just not for me. So it's pretty good voice acting. Uh, press type to toggle the tablet focus. Did my sister even show the kid the offer? So now we've got to make coffee. So we've got the internal cargo, what, what I think is Mars, but I don't know what then is the, those planets. So I'm not sure, unless Mars has a moon. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, we've got the airlock. And Proximity got the kitchen. to the kitchen insufficient. And then in here, we have the coffee machine. So you can see if you're playing this game and, and you're trying to find what thing to interact with, you can see on the tablet it's saying make coffee and pointing this way. As soon as you get to the thing that you can interact with, it changes to nothing. So it should say, you know, press E or something like that. It doesn't say it until you actually press it. Incoming so. worm dispatch from Janice at Cedars Tech. Okay. Janice, Janice, Janice. What are you up to today? So now we pre go to mail, go to Janice, and then play. So that, that message with Todd was in the 23rd July, 2152. And then Serena's reply was the 7th of Feb. And it's it's also the 7th of Feb uh, today in the game. Now it's Janice. Eli, hope this finds you well and not too badly singed from whatever you're working on these days. Enclosed are the latest updates to the communication system. Be aware it will require any existing systems to be retrofitted. Upgrades to the mixing and sifting integrated software are included. This initiation should be very helpful to you and set you up for the time to come. I worked these enhancements myself. Take care of this one for me. And take care of you, you old ray tracer. Janice Barnes, Automation Systems Lead, Cetus Tech. Also, another thing that never gets personal. Huh. Holy crack. That's a massive file. Not many of us even have this kind of capacity. <laughs> Let the verse upload. So, uh, a, little, a quick little note here also. Uh, it's very, very early access. Um, so, there's no kind of options to change your sound and change your video. So, I had to uh, reduce the volume in the sound settings, the Windows sound settings. And I also had to. Uh, uh, lock the FPS because I, I stream and record these videos. Uh, I had to lock the SPS and turn VCCon manually with my NVIDIA settings. And it's made the game run much smoother. It was pretty janky Hi, I'm Sarah, as the default AI install. Assistant. By installing this system on your device, but it's very early days, so all terms and no fail. Beginning assessment to fully assist you. So far, so good. Analyzing financial history. What the sir? Accessing station infrastructure. Firewall established. Reconfiguring local network. Overriding all control. Oh, whoa, whoa, darling. You gotta earn that kind of trust. You're a rookie. Pausing assessment. Oh, yeah. My algorithms have been heavily scrutinized to avoid harm or unwanted circumstance to my user. Further, I am rigorously tested prototype software. Also, I have a nice voice. Yeah, I admit it's a very nice voice. Okay. So it is very nice. Authorization acknowledged. Continuing. Constructing preferences. Capturing facial likeness. Assessing the situation. Generating actionable items. You, you seem nice, but this is moving a little fast for me. Shall I send relevant equipment to the moon surface for testing? 
You scanned my personal notes? Only for your convenience. I am here to assist. Okay, send equipment, send all equipment for testing, yes. Well, okay, for now, but we need to set some boundaries. Sending down now. Okay. So again, it's, it's saying activate the console. And you don't know which console it is until the tabular changes, see? Like it's, you know, a little bit obvious to proceed, that please boot up console. this one's turned on. But when I first played, I was like, what do we do? So it's when, when the tablet changes to nothing is when you can press Was e. that so hard? Please test newly enabled operations. I will remain in test mode. No lunar action will be taken. Sarah, you little speed cracker, all the new parts are on the moon's surface. That was fast. I'm here to help. These parts are necessary to regain stable communications with the mining equipment, a necessity for our ongoing research, am I right? Well, right, but let's agree that searching my finances was not necessary. That's what we call a boundary, okay? And did I hear you say I'm? Since when does AI use contractions? Sarah? Let's begin by gathering material and getting the parts printer in order. Okay, so now we're into like mining and processing phase. Uh, so use the right mouse button to look around and then WSAD to kind of navigate. So then you can use a combination of both to, you can zoom in and out. Uh, so now we've got to look at creating a comms tower. So we go to the station. No, we don't. We go up to the top here. So you've got um, a build menu. We can't do those till they're grayed out. But this one here, you've got storage, processing, production. Now, the ones in white, you can build. The ones in gray, you can't. So we need to build a comms tower. So you can see you've got like red, uh, red and green kind of indicators of where you can put it. So I'll just put it there. Then you've got this little worker dude that comes along and and slowly builds. So when you zoom in, and even if on the, on the outside, what, you know, the the components that are blue are what he's working. He or you know the machine is working on next. So it takes a little while. You can see up here, top right, there's a get, there's a time speed button, so you can crank it up to get him really going. All right. So the comms tower is done. And we open up the comms window. So we got two surveyors and two miners, looks like. Select a miner and set it up to collect basic regolith material. Okay, so now it's indicating this is a mining craft. And then we've got to change this here to be basic. And then he will, the, the miner will then go off and start mining that material. Okay, so now we've got to start constructing a powder printer. So we've got a production, we've got a printer, and let's put it just where it's green. There. All right. So one thing I would like to see, like again, you can zoom in, right in, and see the blue bits that the machine is actually working on currently. But um, later on in this tutorial, you'll see uh, it gets a little bit more complex. So it'd be, it'd be pretty cool if we could have like a little little progress meter on every building, just so you can see, you know, because you can visually see it starting to upgrade, but that's because I'm doing nothing else but concentrating on watching. So later on when you've got lots of buildings and you're trying to do multiple processes and, and things and getting resources and sifting them etc um, you don't want to have to sit and watch to make sure wait until this is finished so it's quite intricate I like the detail in the buildings all right so that's finished now so set up the silo and warehouse parts for production so we have to drag the material gathered by the miner to the powder printer so you open up the printer you got a materials icon here and then down here is the resources that have been mined. So we're going to put that inside there. And then that that miner now is just going to bring in enough of this resource to then fill it to capacity. Set up the silo and warehouse parts for production. 
So you've got silo written here, warehouse. So click silo and the tick, and it does all the various parts of the silo. And then you tick for the warehouse as well. And that ticks, it builds all those things or queues them up. Start constructing a warehouse. Okay, so we go to processing, no, storage, warehouse. So now we can click this and we can put a warehouse. Let's here. set up some storage before making more advanced materials. Okay. So I did this tutorial the other night um, and I just rushed through and I built the, I put the warehouse, I queued up the silo and I queued up the next one, which is the sifter, the mixer. I found that the construction bots will only build the last thing that you put down uh, or, or either that or I bugged out the tutorial because I had a warehouse, a silo, a sifter and a mixer. It kind of got this far in the warehouse, a little bit on the silo, a little bit on the sifter and then it built just the mixer and I got to a part in the in the instructions here that I couldn't progress forward. So this, this playthrough I'm just going to go through and just build one at a time. So I can hopefully succeed. So again, like it'd be cool if there was a, a meet, you know, a progress meter, because this is going full speed and it's still taking a bit of time because it's got to go mine the ore, um, repair the parts, then bring the parts over. That guy looks like he's bugged out too. <laughs> no, he's good. Um, all right. So you can see the printers printing the, the pieces, which is pretty cool to watch. Like there's a lot of detail, which is pretty awesome. And then, then they chuck them on. So you can see the bits that are being worked on. It's quite detailed. I like it. Just, I mean, it, it, again, I got to remind myself, it is very early in the development. And I'm sure everything I'm suggesting has probably been suggested already, but That'd be nice to have. Okay, so we're done. The warehouse is done now. So we'll do production, no, storage. So we'll do a silo. Let's put that close by. Configure at least one silo to store materials. Okay. So again, I, I could just put this ore in here but uh, uh, this is what I did love the other night I just stuffed up so I'm just going to take my time on this one I do like the music in the background it's kind of like it kind of suits this industrial and scientific and exploratory kind of mood that it's going for all right so we're going to put this ore in here it may take time for the auto maintenance to complete the build in order to separate materials more infrastructure is necessary so you can see that's starting to build up now. All right, so construct at least one sifter now. So if you get stuck, and I know what to do because I've done this a couple of times now, but if you get stuck on a thing, like see it's all grayed out and it says construct at least one sifter, but it doesn't kind of tell you what to do. So it took me ages to kind of figure out. You've got... Um, uh, you've got help over here, so sifter. Uh, so that will come up shortly, but uh, where, so we want the printer, yeah, so if we go to the printer tutorial, or the printer description. Powder printers center materials into parts. Each powder printer uses a single material. The produced parts can be selected with the check marks. Each part has different material requirements and must exceed one durability value to be produced. The internal material volume must exceed 90% capacity to start printing. So I didn't, you know, I didn't really take notice that there is sifter in here. So you tick sifter. And so I've ticked it and that's what I did with the silo and the, and the warehouse, but it's not doing anything. So then I ticked common. And so obviously unticking common I think this sifter needs a buffer base and a buffer wall. So I'll tick common again 
and Sifter becomes available. So I th- that should be a little bit explained a little bit better. Because that took me a few frustrating goes to get. Okay, so now we've got the Sifter going. And this next step again took me a long time to figure out what it meant. So, so basically the next step, once this is finished, produce a ceramic material with over 1600 kPa compressive strength and 2000 Kelvin melting temperature at above 0.45 cubic meters per hour. It's, it's cool, I like, I like the scientific terms and it's kind of jogged my memory of high school physics and chemistry. And you probably haven't noticed yet because I've been zoomed in, but it's uh, 11 a.m. and it's quite dark. So um, I actually had never done this before. So you can actually see the Milky Way and the planet is actually revolving, which is cool. If I look all the way down. I like that. I like that effect. I didn't notice that before. That's cool. All right. Where are we at? Where are we at? We're down here. How are we doing? How are we doing? We're doing good. We're getting there. Meow, 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 meow. I think like you'd always want it full speed, I reckon, unless I'm missing something later game. But in this early stage, you'd always want um full speed oh yeah so they're done yeah i think they're done okay so now we've got the sifter interface so produce a ceramic material with over 1600 kpa compressive strength and 2000 kelvin material so you got kpa here but on both this material and this material uh so that's compressive strength hardness and melting temperature so if i put our base material here That then gives us a uh, material that has 1100 kPa or 584 kPa at 21 meters cubic meters per hour. So I need to produce a material with over 1600 kPa and 2000 Kelvin melting temperature. So let's go and take this one to 1600 if we can, almost. So now I need to adjust right. Making and selling the replacement speed. rocket parts could provide income to fund our off the record experiments. How did you... You may be a program, but you're a little grifter, aren't you? Janice instructed me to assist in all of your legitimate development and off-the-server experiments. Hey, research I do is legitimate, but it would be nice if the board remained unaware of certain purchases and uh, activities. Okay, so combine multiple sifter outputs using a mixer. So now we've got to build a mixer. We need to go to the printer, we need to go to mixer, and then tick mixer. And then that makes that buildable. And we'll put that down here. Okay. So you can see we've got four different resources now. I don't know what they're called, like it doesn't have a tooltip saying what they are, but I just know the progression of colors. Okay, so this is a fairly big building, this one, so it's got a fair few components, which takes a little while to build. There's a lot of menu items we don't know yet. So there's, I don't know what these are. Presumably, I don't know, wind, water. Not sure.
<clears throat> Lots to learn. Okay, almost finished, I think. It's cool that you can see it 3D printing the parts that are about to go there and there. Okay, so we've got the mixer. Combine multiple sifter outputs using a mixer. Produce a ceramic. So we need to make that. So I assume we're going to put one, two, three in there to make this fourth material. But this is where I don't quite understand what a what I need to do because you've got this little progress bar there so I don't quite a ceramic material so that's crystal percentage oh dear have I stuffed it up Mixer. Mixers take in ceramic powder from multiple sources to create a single material source consisting of a weighted material volume. Different ingest volume weights can be set to adjust the material properties of the resulting ceramic powder. I think I've destroyed that bloody thing there. So you can go back here multiple sifter outputs okay let's get another sifter and we'll work it out all right well i'm going to leave the tutorial there i'll let that going and then i'll continue this playthrough next time but my name is inferno this is my first look at a litho break uh, as i said early access is coming february next year and the developers, uh, Tower City Labs, currently taking applications for uh, requesting access through Steam, if you go to the Steam page. But yeah, pretty good so far. But I've got a little bit to learn. So we will come back to this. All right, my name's Inferno. Have a good weekend gaming, and I will see you next time.